My name is Aaron Edwards. Um, I am the CTO for Inksa, which is the parent company of WPMU Dev, Edgy Blogs, and Campus Press. WPMU Dev, we have more than 100 premium plugins and themes and support services, lots of cool stuff there. Edgy Blogs, it's one of the largest multi-site installs online with hosting more than 3 million WordPress blogs, which is pretty crazy. And Campus Press, which is a VIP-like hosting service for education. So we have a lot of experience with dynamic websites, hosts, and all that stuff. Um, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, normally when you do or go to a performance talk like this at a WordCamp, they'll be talking more about the front end of your site and speeding that up and caching plugins, configuring, all that kind of stuff. And a big focus goes to full page caching. The problem is if you have a dynamic site, like you run BB Press, e-commerce, WordPress multi-site, BuddyPress, membership sites, pretty much any site where a lot of your visitors are going to be logged in, they're going to be skipping that full page cache almost all of the time, which means it's not helping you out at all. So today we're going to be talking about fixing the page generation time that part of that stack. Now if you look at a normal request to your website when you're logged in, it might look something like this. You'll see this big bar where it's waiting for your page to be generated and sent to you and then after that your browser can download all the assets and things like that. So just talking about this page generation time and how we can improve that can make a huge impact on your site, especially when it's a dynamic site. Now Google recommends maximum 200 milliseconds for your page generation time and really you want to get that much lower than that as much as possible. But that can be a huge challenge when you have a large plugin, a lot of large plugins and themes that are running code all the time. It can be a big challenge to meet that mark. Now when I first uh, started this presentation, I thought I'd be talking more about scaling out to multiple servers and different architectures like that, but I realized from my own experience that doing that does not actually solve your performance issues. All it's going to do is multiply that, multiply that if you don't fix those underlying performance issues that you're having. So to look at how to fix that, um, if you look at that normal page uh, generation time, you can divide it up in a few chunks that you see right here. Um, the biggest chunk is usually your database. That's the big bottleneck that you run into on your site. Um, to fix the database problems is you want to optimize things as much as possible. So you want to look at your queries. There's an awesome plugin called Query Monitor that you can install and it allows you to analyze the queries um, that all your plugins are making and see where the problem areas are, where you can add an index, where you can get rid of that plugin completely because it's terrible. Um, also optimizing your MySQL configuration. So query cache is a big thing. It's surprising how many people don't have the query cache enabled in MySQL. But that can be a big help if you have a lot of read only tables. Also MySQL Tuner is a little script that you can run and that just analyzes your config and gives you advice for how you can improve your database. Also converting tables to NODB. I say high write tables only and not all tables because if you're running a large WordPress multi-site install, um, like we are on edgy blogs, converting all your tables to NODB can cause some major headaches. Trust me, we've experienced that. So we focus more on the tables that have a lot of write requests going to them. So like the global tables in a multi-site install. Um, also, MariaDB is an alternative to MySQL. It's actually a fork of it with newer code. You can get about 10 to 20 percent performance boost by switching to that. And if you're lucky enough to be hosting on Amazon, um, Aurora is a new service or alternative for MySQL that has two to three times better benchmarks in the speed, which is pretty amazing. Um, but ultimately, the best way to optimize your time spent in the database is never letting the queries get there in the first place. And that's where the WordPress object cache comes in. So normally PHP is talking to MySQL directly, which is disk-based and slow. But if you have an object cache configured, you can be caching a lot of those queries and requests in memory, which is so much faster. A few object caching plugins are Memcache and Redis. Um, those are the ones I recommend because they're memory based and if you scale out to multiple servers, they can share the same cache. They can work in that aspect. If you try to do file based or APC, um, file based is just sometimes slower than not using one at all. So I highly recommend against that. All right. Um, the other thing you need to look at is that PHP chunk of the page load generation time. Um, one of the most important things is optimizing the code that's running, the PHP code. Uh, for beginners, there's a cool plugin called P3 and allows you to basically see, is this plugin causing this amount of resources? And you can say, oh, this plugin is a hog. I don't really need it. I'll get rid of it. Uh, very easy for beginners to use. If you're more advanced, you can use Xdebug and PHP and you can analyze the cache grind files and actually profile the code 
and say this function is bad, this loop is running too many times, et cetera, et cetera. And on a production site where you're getting a lot of traffic, New Relic is an awesome service that you can use as a paid service, but it does wonders in helping you analyze and profile your PHP code. Um, some of the things that I've run into when analyzing PHP code, um, these are the worst offenders that I've seen. Uh, first of all, unnecessary unoptimized queries. Uh, you can cache a lot of them into the object cache, and that will save you a lot of times. On WPMU Dev, uh, we run a lot of our own plugins on our own sites, high scale sites, so we spend a lot of time trying to optimize those plugins with the object cache. Also, look out for plugins like stats plugins, redirection, logging. I've seen oftentimes they try to write to the database on every page load. That is a big no no. It's going to slow down your site incredibly when you have a high traffic site. Watching out for remote requests. So when PHP has to call like an external API like Google or what, Facebook, whatever it is, it has to wait for response for them before it can finish generating your page. And if that other API service is running slow, it's going to slow down your site incredibly. Could even crash it if that service goes down. So you want to make sure you use low timeouts there, that you cache them as long as possible, and do not cache them in transients, even though the codec says that's what they're for. Because if that transit runs out and that API service goes down, it's going to be making an external call every single time the page loads, and that will crash your site like it's done to Edubugs before. So watch out for that. Also, some plugins, they'll try to flush the rewrite rules every single page load. Still a problem out there. Watch out for that. And anything that tries to write to your file system directly, that'll slow down your site too. Um, also, part of increasing the PHP speed is to work on that architecture directly. So using Nginx is highly recommended. I haven't used Apache for five years because Apache has to load PHP for every single page load, even for loading CSS, JavaScript, that kind of stuff. Nginx is only going to pass your dynamic requests over to PHP, so that gives you a lot of headroom. If you're running multi-site, make sure you're using a CDN or varnish cache in front of your media files because many people don't know this, but your uploads are actually rewritten through PHP in multi-site. It's a weird thing that they do, but that will give you a lot of headroom if you can keep those requests from hitting PHP for media. Also, make sure you're using the latest versions of PHP because you can get a 5.5, 5, 5, 5.6, you can get 10 to 20% more speed by using that than if you're back on some older version of 5.2. And finally, if you're not using the op cache, you're crazy because that is built into PHP. You just got to enable it, and it will speed up your request by two times at least, usually. And there's a few rules here that I don't have time to cover um, for how you can optimize that op cache too. <coughs> finally, Think about switching to PHP 7. So exciting, on Thursday, PHP 7 was released, and I'm very excited to be rolling it out on Edublogs and Dev and some of the sites that we host soon. Um, it's showing two to three times higher speed than the previous version of PHP. That's a huge thing, and it's very exciting. I'm excited about that. So look at switching your server to using the latest versions of PHP, if possible. Um, Another thing that you need to look at, once you have a live site that's going and it's at scale and running a lot of requests, is how do you monitor that site? Um, for our sites, we use StatsD. It's an awesome open source project from Etsy. And we use it with the WordPress plug plugin that I've written. You can see the link to that plugin if you want to use it. And it allows you, without causing any latency on your site, to be able to analyze your code, analyze what's going on in your WordPress site. And for our developers, they can just put in a one-line piece of code anywhere in our stack, and they can see, oh, how long does this query take? Oh, how many times does this query fire? All that kind of stuff to help optimize the code. So I highly recommend looking into that if you're able to roll that your own. If you're not, New Relic is a great service, again, that I talked about before. Um, it's a paid service, and it's good, but if you have multiple servers, it can start getting expensive really fast, but something to look into. And if all this sounds too technical for you, and you don't have the ability to hire some experienced sysadmin that can take care of this for you, uh, check out some of these managed hosts that are out here in the hallway today. A lot of them implement a lot of these suggestions already, like object cache using Nginx, et cetera. Most of them support HHVM in certain plans. And um, a lot of them that I've talked to are getting ready to release PHP 7 supports very soon, too. So talk to them about that. They can help you out with a lot of these things. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, the link to the slides is on here. And feel free to catch up with me after anywhere today if you want to pick my brain, ask questions, or check out WPMU Dev, where you can bug me every single day to get more knowledge about this stuff. Thank you.